Welcome back, everyone. I'm glad to be back. I uh, am sorry I've been away for so long. I actually have had a child since uh, the last time I've uh, done a video, and I wanted to make a new video. So, as you know, TrueNAS has um, updated their way of installing their new system with reverse proxies. So, we're going to go over all of that in a beginner guide for a new tutorial for all you guys. So, I hope you guys enjoy, and let me know if it helps you. If you have any questions, you can always follow us on our Discord. We have help support there 24-7 whenever you need it. I'll try to respond as soon as I see it. So let's jump right in. First thing we need to make sure is we're on the latest software revision. This is one thing I did not know. Uh, you want to make sure you're on TrueNAS scale 23.10, otherwise known as Cobra or Corba. Um, if you don't know how to update or you haven't updated Cobia, uh, you can do that by going uh, finding documentation or if you just go into your system settings update and if you click on here it should show if there's an update and you should be able to drop down the release menu uh, I was on Bluefin now I'm on Cobia Cobia is the latest you need to be on this to have any apps if you have are still on Bluefin just note that your apps you'll have to remove some of your apps such as because the trains have changed as well so I'll go over all that stuff in a quick little moment so let's okay so let's jump right in. So the first thing we need to do is go into our system settings, go into general, and we need to update our GUI to have 444 and 81 as the local port. Reason being is that Caddy or Nginx or um, Trafico, they all use a reverse proxy under 80 port and 443, and it just makes it easier to do later on. So we're going to change our uh, TrueNAS port from 443 and 80 to 444 and 81. Do this, we go to system, general obviously, then under GUI, we go into settings, and we're going to change the web interface port to 81, and the web interface port for HTTPS to 444. So again, the HTTP port is 81, HTTPS port is 444. Once you click save, it should uh, log you out automatically or show a disable page once it saves the settings. To get back in, you just need to type in HTTPS colon forward slash forward slash your internal IP of your TrueNAS device and colon 444. That should load you right back into TrueNAS and you shouldn't have an issue after that. The reason we do this again is because of the reverse proxy. It uses 443 and 80 by default. That's the HTTP and HTTPS port. So next what we need to do is we need to go into settings and choose our pool. If you've updated, if you haven't, we need to set up a pool. I've already set up my pools, so I'm not going to do that. Next uh, let me go back. We go into Discover Apps. This will bring us to the app page. Go to Manage Catalog, and we're going to select. Um, if you haven't updated your catalog, click Refresh All. If you are on Bluefin, you should know that your catalog has changed. So the trains have been different. They were originally like corporate and enterprise and stuff like that. They're going to be changed now. So all you have to do to update it is to click on the train right here. Click on Edit. And if you haven't done it yet, enable Stable System and Premium. Uh, basically, these are different trains for different apps. Uh, this will give us access to all the ones we need. Reason we have these three trains, I'm assuming, is because there's some that are used for networking that's premium, and then there's some that are system wide that are system and stable, like all the true NAS, like odd and end ones that are like you know, Nextcloud and yada yada yada. Once you click save, it should load. We just click refresh all. I've already done this, so I don't need to do it again. Mine's already done. Uh, that should refresh your trains and all your apps. So once you go back into Applications, we click on this top tab, uh, we click on Discover Apps. This time, if we click Refresh Charts, it should refresh all the charts and have every app here now updated. So now to update these, we need to install, I think, four major apps. They're going to be Cloudflare DDNS, Traffica, um, PGAdmin, uh, let's see the other one, um, Blocky, and Here's one more. I'll have them all listed in the description so you know what to put. But essentially what we're going to do now is we're going to install the app. You should show now it says 859, just so you know. So we need to install Cloudflare DDNS. Now the reason we're going to install is first, and when you type in Cloudflare, uh, it's going to pull up all of these. We want the last one under networking. What this is going to do is it's going to allow us to link our IP uh, automatically to our domain on Cloudflare. Um, if you haven't watched how to do a reverse proxy, I recommend looking up how to add a domain to Cloudflare. It's pretty simple. 
straightforward adding it. Uh, you just change the name servers to your domain. I go over this in all my tutorials, so if you watch any one of my reverse proxy tutorials, it should show you how to do it. But for me, the reason we do this is because most standard home ISPs, which is what your internet is running off of, use a what's called dynamic IP, meaning it's always changing. So let's say my IP is like, uh, external IP is 75.159. whatever. It's always going to be under that IP uh, for my, for my like, uh, uh, ISP until either my device reboots or they decide to update my IP, which could be every 24 hours, could be every 48 hours. Depends on your ISP in general where you live. If you don't know if you have a dynamic IP or CGNAT, CGNAT is a closed IP. It's the same thing as dynamic IP. The only difference is you cannot port forward. One way around this is to ask your ISP, especially out of the United States. A lot of them do have an option to add a static IP for a small service charge of one dollars or five to five dollars extra per month. This is obviously an option you have you can do. Um, if that's not suitable enough for you, I would recommend maybe looking to a different ISP or um, looking at using maybe a, a Cloudflare or a tunnel or maybe even a VPS to run your reverse proxy. Um, but most of us do have dynamic, if you have a static IP, then great, you do, do not need this. If you have a static IP, don't worry about it, you can just skip this step. For us, we're going to install Cloudflare DDNS, and this will link basically to our exact Cloudflare records, which I can show you are going to be right here. They're basically how you link your domain to your external IP. It'll basically auto, auto autom automate the contents of your IP to your A record, which has your domain on it. So let's do that. We're going to click install. Uh, we're going to need to get a Cloudflare token. And that's really simple to do, but let's first change our location to where you're located. I'm closest to Chicago, so I'm going to put Chicago. Um, and then let's get our token now. So we're only gonna need to fill in the Cloudflare API token. Don't think we need the zone, but let's get the token real quick for our Cloudflare. So to do this, we are going to go into our Cloudflare account and we're gonna go into um, overview. And we're gonna scroll all the way down, get and we we'll click get your API token right here. create a new API token so get a token and we're going to click custom token and we're going to set it to zone Oops, no, TNS there you go. zone 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 read and then again we're gonna have one more zone zone or DNS, sorry. Edit. I think that's correct. Let me just double check. No. So lastly, before we install Cert Manager, we need to make sure Cloud Native PG is installed. Click on Cloud Native PG. Click um, Install. And everything can stay the same as far as I know. You shouldn't need to change anything natively. You can just, and I already have one, so it's going to save this error for me, but not for you. Keep the default name, click install. Once that's done, we can now install Cert Manager. So let's go into that. So before we get started with running our certs, we do need to set up um, our Select Scales name server. So to do this, um, under Network, so I'll go to that real quick. Network, Global Configurations, go to Settings, and we're just going to change the name server to 1.1.1 and 1.0.0.1. These are the Cloudflare IPs. So we're going to make sure those are set. Click Save. And once that loads, okay, we should. Okay, so the first thing we want to get is Prometheus. So we'll get that. Um, let me find it. So if you scroll down, you'll see we have the operator training Prometheus under Operators, not the monitoring, the Operators. I'm going to click on this. Click Install. I already have it installed, but this is. <coughs> I'm <coughs> just going to go for you guys when you guys install it. <coughs> and just click install. You won't have this error. The only reason I have this error is because I already have it installed. Click install. Okay, so then once we have zone, zone, DNS, read, zone, zone, DN, or zone, zone, read, zone, DNS, edit, 
and we're going to click include all zones um, and we're just going to name it we'll just name it true NAS test okay this can be named whatever you want I just put my true NAS test because I already have true NAS as um, one of the options there so we'll click continue the summary this is correct create token and you can roll these really easily so I'm going to copy this and put it into Cloudflare um, just for testing, this will be removed as uh, so as of ending this. But one way to roll this, if you ever have a compromise, let's say you post somewhere, why not you go to API tokens, go back. If you go back to the API tokens, one sec. <coughs> And you click on um, the API token, so mine was TrueNAS test right here. You click on this, three dots, and click roll. It'll give us a new API token, and that will be the new one we use every time. So I'm going to do that off screen and paste it in, and I will be right back. Okay, so once we have um, Cloudflare done, we have that Cloudflare API token. We can now go down and just set our domain. To do this, we just add a host for time zone. And we add our domain. So for example, mine is demonwarrior.demonwarrior.com. And my zone is going to be... So once you have that, you want to get your zone ID, which is going to be, you do not want to share this zone. If this gets shared, you're in big trouble. Basically, it's going to be under overview, and I'm going to block mine out real quick. It's going to be under overview, and down here you want your zone ID, which is going to be this one right here. I'm going to block mine out so you can't see it, and paste that in here. Again, block it out so you can't see it. I'm going to do the record type as an A type. The rest can stay the same, and we should be able to just continue on with the rest of it. So. Once that's done, click install. It's going to now install. And it's almost done. There we go. Now Cloudflare should automatically update uh, to have our latest um, app. Let's see if it's loaded in here. Sometimes you have to click Control F5 to load it back up to the admin menu. Should load momentarily. And there's our Cloudflare DDNS, as you see, is deploying. So wait for that to deploy and get fully deployed. It looks like everything is working correctly. And as you see, it changed from um, created or deploying to running now. So it is good now we can go into blocky. So to do this, we're gonna go into apps, and I'm gonna delete my blocky because this is not in the run right now. Actually, I can just click, uh, pause. Why do you blocky instance? So, secure blocky, and click add, install another one. And I'm just going to name this blocky dash test. And I'm going to change my time zone, the correct time zone again. Again, I'm from Chicago, I'm near Chicago, closest to me. And we're going to need to change a couple things in here. So we need to edit a couple options here. So I'm going to go back to my setup just real quick when I have a blocky. So I have blocky right here. And I'm going to edit mine because I haven't set mine up yet. So. Once it, <coughs> it loads, it'll ever load. There we go. We need to set two things. We need to set our um, UDP upstream, which is um, the. We need to set this upstream to 1.1.1.1. And we need to set our upstream groups. So we're going to have two of these. Uh, the group name is going to be. Actually, hold on a second. Let me make sure that's correct. Yes. So from the per the documentation, we need to set up a UDP DNS setup. So we're going to go under override default options. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. 
we're going to override default upstream and we're going to set ours as 1.1.1 and 1.0.0.1 and we can keep all these if we want them you don't have to change any of them but I'm uh, just going to leave them all the same so just leave those default and make sure bootstrap DNS is the 1.1.1 as said in the documentation which I'll link everything in the description just so you know um, and then all we need to do is go down and click save all the way down click update we should update those now and we should be able to build a cert now so as you can see blocky is starting now and now that we have prometheus traffica um, blocky and cert manager running now all we need to do is so now we need to set our cluster issuer so we're going to go to cluster and here's cluster issuer we can get it for true charts which is this one and we click install and this is where we'll need our cloudflare api key so to do that um, as you can look on the cluster issuer uh, we've already set the name server and now all we need to do is set our API token for Cloudflare if you're using Cloudflare. I highly recommend using Cloudflare as a DNS propagator, but again, you don't need to. Uh, it's just with this setup, you're going to need to. But you can find other ways to do it if you would like. So we're going to set up our cert manager and we're going to need to get our Cloudflare API token. So to do that, we just go into, um, we need to add a couple things in here. So here's the default cluster issuer. Click <coughs> add an Acme, and it's Cloudflare, obviously. And we're gonna go ahead and just move this over. So we're gonna follow these steps. So we have the cert name as cert. Obviously, the provider is Cloudflare. You can use any one of these that you choose. I'm gonna choose Cloudflare. Let's encrypt production. That means it's going to be in the production mode. That means it's going to be used for live sites you're gonna be using with your apps. Then we need our Cloudflare API key. So to do this, we're going to go to Cloudflare. Let me go to my Cloudflare. Okay. Cloudflare. I'm going to click Get Your API Token. <coughs> and if you did the Cloudflare DDNS, it should already be there. So for me, um, I didn't save mine, but I'm just going to roll. Uh, I can. I'll roll it again. So if you set it up. Um, the same way, you just want to make sure you save it somewhere, and you can add that same one in. I think it's still in there. Hold on, let me check to see if it's still in uh, my Cloudflare real quick. Hold on. Yep, so you can go to your Cloudflare <coughs> <coughs> DDNS app, and go down to your Cloudflare API token, and just... Um, oops. <coughs> and click on the Edit button and you scroll down to your API key once it loads <clears throat> scroll down and you'll want to get your Cloudflare token you can click on this little eyeball and then copy and paste it I've already done that and once you've done that you can go back to your cert manager and paste in the Cloudflare API token which I'm going to do again I'll blow this out and we can scroll down and all we have to do now is so I think that's it yep now I have to do is click install and that while that's installing we will um, be able to now issue a cert so as you can see, our block is deployed, our cert manager is running, we have Cloud Native PG, Cloudflare DDMS, and our Prometheus, and there is our see, cluster issuer. So cluster issuer won't run all the time, as they say in the documentation, it'll only run under, you know, uh, when you're running the, um, when it's running the cron job. So you might see it say stopped or <coughs> <coughs> not running, that's fine. We're just gonna open up and start an app. So I'm just gonna go to my Libre speed. This is the best one to test it on. So if you go to Libre speed, set my location. Again, I'm in Chicago or near Chicago. And I go into um, Ingress. And we set our domain. I'm gonna make mine speed.demonwarriortech.com. 
and we should be able, and we set the certificate issuer as cert that's our certificate issuer for our um, our uh, uh, that we set in the last screen at cluster at the cluster issuer and now we should be able to click save update and the last thing you want to do is port forward so we're going to do this you're going to, if you have Verizon, I have Verizon 5G. <coughs> if you have something different, it might look a little different for you, depending on your router. But you just want to go to the port forwarding settings, um, and we're going to set our IP. So I've set mine. You can click um, Add New, and you just set the IP, which mine is this one, my TrueNAS IP, 192.168.0.21. And the port we need 80 for forward port and original port and we need 443 as well so I've already set mine up obviously we go down here and we have 80 set here and 443 set here to my TrueNAS IP and from here all I do is click apply changes um, to check it mine won't show that it's active but um, that's because I'm on Verizon 5G home internet if you're on Verizon 5G home internet or T-Mobile um, 5G it won't show it's active but one way to check if you don't have that if you have like a Comcast so one last thing when setting up your verse proxy um, you want to make sure every time you add a new subdomain ie mine is speed.demonwarriortech.com you want to click add a record and you're going to click a name or I'm sorry C name and let's say we want to do next cloud so we do like photos and then we do a target is at for our domain, so it'll use Demon Warrior Tech as the domain. So photos at Demon and save. And now the new C name should link to our Nextcloud instance as long as we set it in the ingress as photos.demonwarriortech.com. Just as a side note, just in case anyone didn't watch the last video, past or something else, or Cox or one of the other ones. Um, internet providers, you can just do this and you click check. Oh, and mine show open. So 443 and I check. They're open. So now that they're open, we can check our Libre speed and see if it is running. So it looks like it's still deploying. So we'll wait for that to finish. But once it's done, we should be able to go into speed.demonwarriortech.com and there's Libre speed. You have successfully port forwarded your reverse proxy for TrueNAS scale. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed my tutorial. I hope this helped a little bit of confusion that TrueCharts has made and combine it all into one tutorial so you guys understand how to do this for the future. If you guys have any questions or concerns, comments, or issues, please follow the Discord, like, comment, subscribe, and hope you guys enjoyed it. Thank you so much and have a great night.